from uh, Basebec. She joined Basebec back in 2001 as a product manager for its spectroscopy product line. Her primary responsibility at Basebec include product management and as well as sales and marketing for a full line of spectroscopy products, including uh, NIR spectrometers, Raman spectrometers, and Raman microscopes. Prior to, base, prior to joining Basebec, Lynn had worked as a senior application scientist who provided technical support, support for uh, spectroscopy products. Lynn has gained over 10 years of professional experience in developing various optical systems for many applications in material characterization, pharmaceutical industry, forensic science, and cell biology research. So, turn it over to Lynn. Thank you for the introduction. Um, well, first of all, uh, I do want to thank Ruth for reaching out to us to give us the opportunity to speak here. So what I want to uh, talk about instead of dogs is uh, instruments. <laughs> so I think uh, I feel it's a little easier to handle so we know what's inside. We know we, what we put in there. <laughs> anyway. Um, Okay, so uh, what I'm talking about is, is a new line of uh, Raman spectrometer, uh, basically using 1064 laser as an excitation. And uh, we th um, have some uh, preliminary data to show these uh, spectrometers and a Raman microscopes has potential for a lot of forensic applications. So I want to share some of the um, experiment results with uh, uh, everyone here, and also give you some uh, overview about the Raman spectrometers. Okay, so uh, ideally, if you want to have an analytical technique for uh, forensic uh, analysis, so we want, uh, basically, we want something very, ha has very high specificity and accuracy, so it's important to uh, have the results, uh, accurate results, so you don't uh, you know, have a wrong information. And the uh, techniques should be, uh, have a direct measurement um, and with no sample preparation so you don't perturb the sample so you have such as a f uh, promising preserved, you don't really, um, you know, contaminate or causing any suspicion you changed things. Um, and also non-destructive and non-contact. So by far, uh, Raman is the most suitable analytical tool because Raman is not destructive and there's no need for sample or little sample preparation. And Raman spectrum uh, in the fingerprint region is very unique for each molecule. So Raman has very high specificity compared to other spectroscopy techniques such as absorption or fluorescence. So Raman spectrum is very distinctive. And uh, Raman coupled with microscope, you can identify trace forensic evidence in micron scale and also give you chemical specificity. Um, so the, by far the limitation for Raman in forensic science seems uh, because it's not accurate enough. Part of the inaccuracy is caused by fluorescence interferences. So. It's hard to get rid of the forensic background, therefore you can't get accurate uh, analysis. So uh, I want to just uh, give a little overview, so what is Raman, uh, when Raman is being discovered. So basically, uh, before I describe the uh, instrument, so Raman is discovered in 1928 by C.V. Raman in India. So what uh, he observed light interact with the molecule, but some of the light changed the wavelengths. So basically he used uh, sunlight passing through a monochromic filter, so he has a monochromic light. And then he observed a scattering light from a solution, and he observed the color has changed into a different, uh, uh, basically to a longer wavelength, that's the stoke shift. So Raman won the prize for Nobel uh, Prize for his discovery in 1928. So uh, in that time, from India to uh, Europe, take a few months to get there. So, but he was very confident he going to win the prize. So before even the announcement, he booked his uh, trip to 
get the price. So, but he did once. So. <laughs> anyway, that's a little story behind that. I, I was in Bangalore, so I learned this uh, last year. Um, anyway, so uh, Rama is a scattering effect. So basically, nowadays we use a laser, very intense laser, to induce the scattering, and then you record a Rama spectrum. So you can see it has very narrow band, and then Rama spectrum is considered spectroscopic fingerprint, and that can be used for material ID. So this is the Jablonski diagram, so basically describe the Raman uh, mechanism. So when you excite the, uh, the, the molecule with intense laser, you actually uh, generate a virtual state. So majority of the light will scattering back we call it, uh, at the same wavelength, so that's really scattered. So only one over a million, basically, uh, is, is Raman scattering, so that's caused by the, uh, the vibrational uh, level split, and then you see the Raman uh, stoke Raman or anti stoke Raman. So that's only one over a million. So Raman is very weak uh, phenomena. So when we measure Raman, what are we measuring? Basically, uh, there's an anti-stoke and a stoke Raman. So we mostly measuring the uh, shift to the longer wavelengths. That's the uh, stoke shift Raman. That's what uh, normally we do. But there are specific other situations people does want to study anti-stoke with special instrument. Okay, so uh, just summarize the main features of a Raman technique. So uh, as we mentioned, the, the Raman spectrum quite distinct and, and uh, they have high specificity. Um, and it doesn't need sample preparation. You don't really need to contact the sample. You can play with your optics to, to measure where uh, you want to measure from the sample. Either direct contact, you can do that, or from a distance. Uh, it has a high spatial resolution with microscope, and uh, you can even un un uh, measure the sample through containers, through glass, or plastic bags. You have to carefully choose different laser excitation. So Rama, in, in essentially, is ideal for material ID. So again, we want to mention the unreliable results. It's partially because of fluorescence background. All right, so, so why we want to uh, use longer wavelengths for Raman? We know Raman is really a weak phenomena, so the longer wavelengths you choose, the weaker the signal. However, it's the competing process for resonance. If for instance, overwhelm your Raman signal, so it, it will be better still you use longer wavelengths, you can get a clean Raman signal. Otherwise, you may have to use a lot of mathematics fluorescent background subtraction, which normally cause a lot of variation for the results. So in, uh, so in uh, basically, in other words, we do want to use 1064 when you have uh, very high fluorescent uh, samples. Okay, so, um, so what kind of a 1064 instrument um, on the market right now? Uh, because the latest development in many uh, components for uh, Raman instruments, such as laser, uh, very compact small laser and very powerful laser, and also cost much less. And also there's, a, as a result of a telecommunication, uh, communication uh, development, the components for telecom, that's the uh, grading as a re, uh, called the uh, new type of grading, it's called the VPG grading. Um, that's a transmittance grading. This grading, it turns out, has very high efficiency and is ideal for Raman instrument. So you put all the components together, very powerful laser, and also high efficient, efficiency grading and deep cooled in gas detector, then you have uh, this is. Uh, dispersive system, very compact, but highly efficient. And, and, and the cost is dramatically reduced as well. So with this kind of setup, um, you can just uh, have a, a basic Raman system with uh, a 500 milliwatts laser or even higher power, 
and the uh, VPC grading, you can get 99% efficiency if you have the right wavelength range. Uh, in this spectrograph, we use F2 spectrograph that has very high collection efficiency, so you don't lose any photons. And a deep cooled ingas, you can cool it to minus 55 degrees with a four stage cooling, and that's T cooled. You don't need liquid nitrogen. So, therefore, you use all those components, you have a compact 1064 dispersive Raman. And this is the uh, different models we have uh, for the 1064 Raman. So, we have a Raman microscope. This microscope has a three lasers simultaneously in this platform here. And you have 532, 785, and 1064. In sensory, you can interrogate a sample at the same spot, by, and you can switch three lasers at exactly the same, stop, same spot. Um, the laser is equipped all on this platform, and the switching is fully automated. So get, this will allow you to evaluate which laser is best suitable for your sample. And this is a portable uh, microscope. You can take this to the field. If you have a sample need to see the micro scale, then you can put under the microscope and take a measurement. So this has a 1064 model as well. And this one we call the steam engine. That's the multi-grading, the black one. Uh, is this working? So this one we call the steam engine. Uh, it has three gratings in the system, and then this has a super high resolution. The resolution in this system could reach four wave number for entire spectral range from 200 to 3,000. And in sense rate, this can be an alternative for uh, FT Raman. So you don't have moving parts, and you have a relatively small footprint. It's still transportable. And this also have a, just a different sampling. You have a, a adjustment for different height of samples. And this is the smallest mini uh, bench top. This mini bench top could have two lasers in the same unit, and you can have different sampling method. And it's battery operated, you can take on the field. So uh, just summarize again with, for the dispersive Raman. Uh, so there's no moving parts like FT. And uh, it uh, can be because of uh, the construction, it can be transportable and it's alternative for FT Raman. So the requisition, uh, the acquisition time is really fast. You can get millisecond sampling time. So, uh, always small footprint and a high sensitivity and a high resolution because of the optics and the in-gas detector is highly sensitive. Um, so the 1064 Raman microscope is also uh, is available for imaging. So for chemical imaging, we, it can be fully uh, automated, uh, the stage scanning for uh, chemical imaging for different samples. And this also has a fiber optic probe. You can do in situ measurement or you have very bulky sample you need a probe. All right, so I want to show some results. So just uh, give you an idea how effective 1064 is to remove fluorescence. So this is a road mean doped uh, uh, plastic, which I think uh, uh, there's a company giving this out, so it's an uh, orange color slide. So you can see if we use 532, you basically saturate the detector. If 785, you still have a huge fluorescence, but 1064, you can measure this plastic Raman uh, emission without any fluorescence from road main. Uh, how fast we can get, um, so this is to give you some idea. So this is a one second integration and this is a 100 millisecond integration. So you get a full spectrum with a one shot. Uh, you can see the resolution. It's quite, uh, uh, quite good for, for this uh, measurement. Uh, again, this is a very bright sample as well, cyclohexane. We can do 100 millisecond integration as well. So um, 
Yeah, uh, the following, I will give some uh, uh, results we did with our 1064 Raman series uh, instruments. So, so basically, we uh, based focus on the application that has a potential for forensic. So one is a material ID, and then uh, also for art authenticity test, it's a ink and paint. And there's some biological samples, so we did some tissue and the blood measurement. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, explosive. This is the RDX uh, spectrum. So this is 785. So you can see you still have fluorescence here, but if you use a 1064, then you have very clean Raman emission. And uh, so 1064, uh, so should be the best wavelength for explosives measurements. And this is uh, uh, the uh, fiber probe setup. So basically you can measure the oxidized right wine inside a bottle. And then use a 1064, you get a very clean signal again. And 785 is quite fluorescent. So this is a, uh, basically could be a, a counterfeit detection if somebody have a fake um, a bottle or or you don't know what's inside at the airport, so you can just take a measurement to see what's inside the bottle. Um, so for uh, gemstone and art uh, uh, identification, we say for authenticity identification. So uh, Raman has been used a lot for gemstone uh, identification purpose and uh, fluorescence could be one of the uh, interference if you don't use the right uh, wavelengths. Um, this is a spectrum from uh, amber. It's highly fluorescent, so it's really hard to measure. So with 1064, we can get a clean signal. So you can identify whether that's a different type of amber or it's a fake or it's a real, real stone. Um, and this one is a comparison measurement from a green glass and an emerald. Uh, we can see there's a three wavelengths used, 532, 785, and 1064. For the, uh, the, the two visible wavelengths, you don't really see the, the uh, Raman uh, emission band. It's just very broad fluorescence. So when you use 1064, you can see emerald has a very distinct Raman emission, and this is the green glass just of fluorescence. So you can easily tell which one is the real gem and which one is just a fake glass. Okay, so uh, we did some preliminary measurement with some paint color commercially available and use our Raman microscope. So that has a three laser on there. So basically that's the uh, oil paint and also the watercolor set. So what we did at first is we put all this paint on the paper. We know paper is highly fluorescent. So even with 785, you still doesn't really see very good Raman signal, you see a lot of broad uh, fluorescence background. And this is a, in comparison, this is the 1064 results for all this uh, paint. So you can see we can pull it out very good uh, Raman spectrum from all this individual paint. So uh, the idea of this is if you know what kind of paint, uh, like in certain period time or certain region the art is going to use, you can have this uh, uh, paint uh, different color being measured, then you can build your own library and therefore you can check the, uh, the artwork, whether it's exactly from that period or exactly use this kind of paint. So, uh, so basically the idea behind this is to, for uh, artwork uh, authenticity uh, examination. Uh, so this is the oil colors. So you see again with uh, 785, we do see a lot of fluorescence. And uh, 1064, we see much better resolved uh, Raman spectra. And this is the uh, 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 map we uh, imaged on the Raman microscope. So we have uh, uh, a ink just uh, colored on the paper. You can see the 
the bright field images here, those are the ink and those are just the paper. So we just show the capability of a 1064 Raman. So may, uh, you can get a Raman Im uh, image from highly fluorescent sample. So this is the ink, a Raman spectrum, and this is the, uh, the uh, mapping was measured, I think it's about 1100 wave number. Uh, so this is a measure for two different type of pollen which we collected. Uh, this is the uh, flower and this is a tree pollen. And pollen typically is quite fluorescent. So we use 1064, we can see the Raman spectrum quite different. So from this I, uh, test, so you can use 1064 to ID the pollen what type of pollen, or you can therefore to trace the pollen to where that uh, uh, pollen came from. Okay, so uh, we also did some biological sample measurement. So with uh, the Raman, we did on the tissue and the blood samples. So even though 785 Raman has been used for a lot of tissue measurement, but there are still some of our uh, uh, existed in the measurement. So the 1064, it, it will be a, a better choice to get a clean Raman spectrum. So the 1064 measurement compared as two wavelengths, you have a 3.4 fold reduced uh, in the uh, scattering because the longer wavelengths. But however, 1064, you, uh, you can, accumulate longer because the power is relatively less. So you don't burn the sample or you don't cause any damage. However, because 1064 is a longer wavelength, you got scattering efficiency slow. Typically, 1064 measurement from the tissue require longer integration time. Okay, so the first a few tissue sample we did uh, from animal. Uh, basically, we collect some uh, parts actually bought from supermarket. <laughs> we took some measurement. Uh, so we uh, sample basically, we just put on the regular container and took the measurement. Okay, so this is the uh, kidney. Uh, we know it's very difficult to get a Raman spectrum from those kind of highly uh, dense red uh, tissue but you can see 1064 can actually see some Raman emission here. And this one is a liver from the chicken. And uh, again, 1064 uh, will has a clear Raman emission. Uh, the other example is the uh, pork belly fat. And uh, basically from, this is a, has very, it's a kind of easy measurement because uh, it, it doesn't have really red dark color. So you get a few sec, two seconds, you can get a clean Raman spectrum here. Okay, blood sample. We uh, have a chance to get some real blood sample supplied by a customer. Uh, so we took the measurement in a, a while, so it's not a dry blood, but it's a, uh, you know, it's an attempt to take a measurement. So, so basically, uh, we use the system. Uh, it's a high resolution one. We have a full spectrum, and uh, the integration time is up to 30 seconds. And here is the uh, blood spectrum. So we were able to get some typical floating uh, Raman band here. So it's a, a mite and also the uh, uh, the finality uh, band here. Uh, so basically the uh, the test here just to have a proof concept the 1064A actually is quite a sensitive uh, method. You, you should, you can get Raman band from uh, just a blood sample without treatment. Okay, so um, in conclusion, uh, so we want to uh, present this 1060 dispersive Raman. Uh, it has really enhanced the performance because the advancement in the laser, fast electronics, and the highly sensitive detectors are available on the market right now. So uh, the 1064 Raman can reduce and eliminate fluorescence, and think uh, that could be uh, 
ideally for many challenging to use for challenging forensic applications, especially you see a lot of forensic background. So for the application with 1060 or dispersive Raman, uh, we think uh, you can explore this uh, uh, application even, uh, you know, hasn't been discovered because the forensic interference. So we hope that I can uh, give some uh, idea um, from the expert in the field where we can use this 1064 spectrometer now is available uh, to you. Okay, um, I think that's all I have for today. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. We've got time for some questions? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, so the question is uh, 1064 reduce fluorescence, and what is? I'm using the 7, 8, 5. 5. Uh, so we, because of the 1064. Oh, no, no. It's not going to be obsolete because if you can use a shorter wavelength, you still want to use shorter wavelengths. The only the case is 1, 7, 8, 5, you can't really see anything. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, he's, he is asking uh, about uh, have we done any direct comparison with FT? Um, well, the, the answer, unfortunately, we haven't done any direct comparison because we don't really have FT system accessible to us to do in parallel. But we are looking into some common materials being well studied by FT. Hopefully we have some uh, uh, report soon. But that's, thank you for the question, yes. But uh, I think there's some common material, uh, like plastics or some PMMA, we can easily get measured in um, seconds. So I think that's been studied highly by FT. Yes. I was wondering, Lynn, did yeah. you enable a look at black powders? Oh, that's the tough one. <laughs> okay. We have some black powders, okay? So um, the things to measure that you really have to keep moving the samples, we have some success for some certain powders, some just black coal. So. I, and then we have like a two of them. One of them just couldn't get anything or they don't have a Raman. And there's another one we do get Raman. So we have certain success, but that's by far really difficult to measure still. Yeah. So the, the you know, if you, you know, you don't see anything, then you put a lot of laser, then you burn them. Yeah. And so, so the, the trick is, you, you're going to have a moving stage. You have to keep moving it, shaking it. Yeah. So, so that that's a trick. So we were able to pull some data out. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.